Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey, National ERISA and Individual Disability Attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, I've got to give you a legal disclaimer. This podcast is not legal advice, but nothing will ever prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games the disability carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. So off we go. Frequently, I get questions about how much a disability insurance claim might be worth. That's a difficult question to answer, but I'm going to try to walk through it and today talk about three things that impact the value of a disability insurance claim. So let's first talk generally about how much my long-term disability claim is worth, how the date you became disabled impacts how much your long-term disability claim is worth, and what a settlement or a buyout of your long-term disability policy or plan is. Okay? All right. Let's take a break before we come back. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. Let's talk about how the date you become disabled, it will impact how much your long-term disability claim is worth. In my view, the date you became disabled is the starting point for determining the value of your claim. Many disability policies will, will, will require that you complete an elimination period before you get started. Now, some elimination periods can be as short as 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, but I've seen elimination periods of over one year. So you have to be disabled this entire period of time based on the definition of disability before you are able to collect dollar one. And if you don't meet the elimination period, you aren't even considered to be disabled, regardless of how disabled you might be. Now, another issue is some policies will require that you be totally disabled as that term's defined uh, or be residually disabled as that term is defined, or will allow a combination of total and residual disability to satisfy the elimination period. And you've got to understand this because if you go at it wrong, if, if you are required to be totally disabled and then maybe residually disabled, but you are filing a claim and you're only residually disabled, then you aren't going to meet the elimination period. Now, once you complete the elimination period, the disability carrier is supposed to pay your benefits for as long as you meet the applicable definition of disability. That can be as long as two years, depending on uh, whether there's a mental nervous or subjective medical condition limitation in the policy, if you can't do your own occupation, uh, or there are, or are there clauses in the, in the policy that somehow limit the payment of benefits. So now that we kind of know the date you become disabled, now we know the elimination period, let's look at the other end, and that's how long might they pay benefits? Because this is going to give us what I think of as a basement and a ceiling. Let's get out the terms uh, of your policy and look at them uh, closely, because how long the policy or plan requires the payment of benefits is going to depend on what it says. Now, typically, a disability policy or plan will potentially pay benefits to retirement age or life. You need to get the front several pages of your plan or policy that will describe the elimination period, which is the starting point, and the provisions that describe how long benefits are possible. And this is known uh, generically as something called a declaration sheet or a deck sheet. Now, there's a second document that might help us with the ceiling, uh, uh, the basement and the ceiling, and that's a summary plan description. You can ask your employer or plan sponsor for these documents, and by law, they're supposed to provide them to you. By the way, if they don't, they potentially can be subject to a fine of $110 per day and attorney's fees. So let's do some kind of basic math calculations. Uh, and these calculations are going to start with the gross amount of benefits from the date a person is disabled, figure out the elimination period, when that ended, and then try to figure out the stopping point for disability benefits. Now, 
I'm going to give you an example. Let's say your benefits are $5,000 a month. You become disabled on January 1st. There's an elimination period of 90 days and you have 20 years from the date of disability till you reach age 65. That's the basic information that we want to glean from the disability policy or plan. So benefits start April 1st, 20 times uh, uh, 12 months at $5,000 is $1.2 million. Now that's the starting point for the calculation because we know um, the date you became disabled, we know the elimination period, and we know when the benefits are in. So we know the basement, we know the ceiling. But that's only the starting point for the calculations. Remember uh, in my eight list, uh, item list, uh, laundry list, there were other things that needed to be considered. We need to consider, for example, the policy limits. Are there offsets? Are there reductions? Are there limits on how long uh, benefits are paid for certain medical conditions? And of course, what's your life expectancy? Got it? We'll continue this discussion uh, in a moment. Let's take a break. 